What was this gift? It's the gift we call Yiddishkeit Torah. Once that gift came into the world, once the Jews began living and embodying and breathing that gift, history was changed forever. To convey this clearly, I'm going to quote a few statements that were said not by Jews, but actually by non-Jews. Because sometimes, in a very interesting way, who in the entire Chumash speaks in the most beautiful way about Jews? <laughs> Not Jews. <laughs> Bilam. If you want to understand the Jew, you got to go to Bilam. Because Jews are very busy with self-hate and complexities. We don't know who we are. We're too busy in therapy trying to figure ourselves out. But Bilam had a perspective. Etc. One of the greatest writers of all time was the Russian writer Leo Tolstoy. Tolstoy writes, I quote verbatim in translation from Russian. What is a Jew? Let us see what kind of peculiar creature the Jew is. All the rulers and all the nations have separately abused and molested, oppressed and persecuted, trampled and butchered, burnt and hanged. And in spite of all of this, he's alive. What is a Jew who has never allowed himself to be led astray by all of the earthly possessions, which his oppressors and persecutors constantly offered in order that he should change his faith and forsake his own Jewish religion? The Jew is that sacred being who has brought down from heaven the everlasting fire and has illuminated with it the entire world. He is the religious source, spring and fountain of which all the rest of the peoples have drawn their beliefs and their religions. The Jew is the pioneer of liberty, even in those olden days when the people were divided into two distinct classes, slaves and masters, even so long ago, had a law of Moses prohibited the practice of keeping a person in bondage for more than six years. The Jew is the pioneer of civilization. Ignorance was condemned in olden Palestine even more than it is today in civilized Europe. Education, knowledge, wisdom, information was mandatory. The Jew is the emblem of civil and religious toleration. Love your stranger and the sojourner, Moses commands, because you have been strangers in the land of Egypt. You know what it is to be a stranger, to be vulnerable, to be a foreigner. And this was said in those remote and sad savage times when the principal ambition of the races and nations consisted in crushing and enslaving one another. The Jew is the emblem of eternity. He whom neither slaughter or torture for thousands of years can destroy. He who neither fire nor sword nor inquisition was able to wipe off the face of the earth. He who was the first to produce the oracles of God. He who has been for so long the guardian of prophecy who transmitted it to the rest of the world. Such a nation cannot be destroyed. The Jew Jew is as everlasting as eternity itself. Leo Tolstoy. Leo Tolstoy. Contemporary historian, non-Jew, Christian, Paul Johnson in the history of the Jews. All the great conceptual discoveries of the intellect seem obvious and inescapable once they have been revealed. But it requires a special genius to formulate them for the first time. The Jew has this gift. To them we owe the idea of equality before the law, both divine and human. Of the sanctity of life and the dignity of the human person. Of the individual conscience and so of personal redemption. Of collective conscience and of social responsibility. Of peace as an abstract ideal and love as the foundation of justice. And many other items which constitute the basic moral furniture of the human mind without the Jews the world might have been a much emptier place. American president, the president of the United States of America, John Adams, 19th century American president. I will insist that the Hebrews have done more to civilize man than any other nation. If I were an atheist who believed or pretended to believe that all is ordered by chance, I should believe that chance has ordered the Jews to preserve and propagate to all mankind the doctrine of a supreme, intelligent, wise, almighty, sovereign of the universe, which I believe to be the great essential principle of all morality and consequently of all civilization. If you don't have a supreme supreme, intelligent, wise, almighty, sovereign, you don't have civilization. A non-Jewish philosopher, Peter 
Kreft is his name, was his name, he writes, the prophetic spirit of the Jew finds meaning and purpose in everything, in history, thereby transforming mankind's understanding of history, their genius for finding meaning everywhere. For example, in science, in the world of nature, everywhere they find meaning. It could be explained in only two ways. Either they were smarter than everyone else, or it was God's doing, not theirs. The notion of the chosen people is really the humblest possible interpretation of their history. If they were a little more arrogant, they should have said, we're just smarter than everybody else. Instead, they said, it was God. It wasn't us. He just chose us. It's not even us. We're just conduit. This is the humblest possible interpretation of their incredible, incredible story. There was an Irish Catholic. His name is Thomas Cohill. And uh, he wrote a bestseller a few years ago, The Gifts of the Jews. He says this, no Jew could say this, but I, I, Thomas Cohill says this. The Jew gave us the outside and the inside, our outlook and our inner life. We can hardly get up in the morning or cross the street without being Jewish. We dream Jewish dreams and hope Jewish hopes. Most of our best words, in fact, new Adventure, surprise, unique, individual, person, vocation, time, history, future, freedom, progress, spirit, faith, hope, justice are the gifts of the Jews. The West's most deeply held beliefs about life, human nature, God, and justice are owed to the ancient Israelites. The Hebrews developed a whole new way of experiencing reality. It may be said with some justice that theirs is the only new idea that human beings have ever had. If I would say this,